Hey, my name is Eric and in today's video we are talking about Wix versus Squarespace versus WordPress and which one of these website building tools is the right fit for your needs. So the reason that I have spacejam.com up on the screen right now is to kind of lessen your anxiety about the decision you're going to make and give you some confidence in what you're about to do. Because this particular website was built by five programmers for Warner Brothers. It went along with the launch of the uh, Space Jam movie, the original with Michael Jordan. And you can see this looks horrific. So you can click on different things. It's got airways, different things you can do. Movie soundtrack. I mean, you can see this website just looks horrible and it hasn't aged very well. Fun story about this site though, is that it's become this kind of funny little internet relic where a Redditor in 2010 found it, posted a thread about it, and it went viral. And this was getting like a half a million views a day just because it's a funny thing that you can visit and you can go check it out yourself. The reason I think this will give you confidence is because of how much money and time was spent building this. And you're gonna be able to build something absolutely beautiful in a matter of hours. And it's gonna cost you maybe 100, 200 bucks for the year to be able to build that site. So one of the first things I wanna talk about though is the way that these website building tools are trending. So if you're not familiar, this is called Google Trends. Very helpful tool if you're in business, if you wanna forecast the way that products and services are trending. But in this particular case, what you can see is that WordPress really dominates the market. As of 2020, it's estimated that about 35% of all the websites online are built on WordPress. But you can see that it's in a slow, steady decline. And the reason for that is you have these simpler tools such as Wix and Squarespace that are gaining in popularity. According to this, Squarespace kind of flatlining and Wix is kind of on the slow uptick. If you remove WordPress, you can kind of see the trajectory of these services a little bit easier. So this is really helpful if you're really researching any product or service. And I'll give you a really good example why. Uh, Weebly, which is also a website building tool, so you can see that they used to have very high popularity, but now they've actually been surpassed by Squarespace and Wix. Now the popularity of a tool isn't everything, but in my opinion, Weebly isn't gonna have the same resources because they clearly aren't gonna have the same sales to be able to commit to customer service or you know creating new features and plugins and being able to keep the tool fresh and exciting for you and have it working properly. So a really important thing to discuss now is closed versus open source platforms, all right? so. WordPress is open source. That means any developer in the world can create themes and plugins and be able to create new things. And that's what makes it exciting is because the marketplace for it is huge. But the downside with that is that it's a little bit more susceptible to risk. So on the flip, uh, Wix and Squarespace are closed source, which means that they're way less susceptible to issues when you launch your website because it's not gonna be something where like a plugin is gonna clash with something else. And I'm gonna give you an example of that right now. So here you can see wordpress.org, they have almost 8,000 themes. And then on top of your themes, so this is kind of like the overall design look of your site, you can also add plugins. And with the plugins, you can see there's over 57,000 plugins. So it's really cool because there's a plugin for pretty much anything you could possibly want to do. Well, for me, I actually managed a website that had about 3 million visitors a year and it was built on WordPress. But one of the issues we kept on having was plugins clashing. So what would happen is you'd update your theme and then all of a sudden this plugin didn't work and then your text is shoved to the right side of the screen. So I'm going to give you a real life example of this that I saw happen just within the last week. So I'm in this Facebook group for online entrepreneurs and uh, this particular person, I'm blurring out all the details here, but he said it looks like one of my WordPress sites picked up some malware and is being used for crypto jacking. What software services does anyone use to fix this? Again, that is because WordPress is an open source platform where it makes it a lot more susceptible to risk. So just a follow up post from this guy three days later explains that it was the WordPress file manager plugin. So if we go back to the actual plugins on WordPress, I found this plugin. If you look at the reviews, you can see the most recent reviews, not a safe plugin, not a safe plugin, hacked on three sites, malware. So even though this plugin overall has been great for years, four and a half stars, like all of a sudden there's an issue that popped up, people's websites are getting hacked and it's a mess. So right off the bat, if you're not somebody who's really tech savvy, I wouldn't recommend WordPress. And I'm gonna kind of drill that point home a little bit further now. So this right here is a help article on GoDaddy and it's talking about configuring and working with domains and DNS. So one of the downsides with WordPress is you're gonna to have to purchase your domain, then you're gonna to have to purchase a hosting service, and you're gonna to have to attach those two things together. 
Doesn't sound that complicated, but it's a little bit tough if you don't know what you're doing. So this particular help article explains everything you have to do to make this happen. So as you can see, it gets pretty complicated. And then as far as like setting up a domain and hosting and all that, when you're using like Wix or Squarespace, all that stuff is taken care of for you and it's ready to go. So the rest of this review really is gonna be focused more on Wix and Squarespace for the sole reason that I believe if you are researching which tool is the right for you, that WordPress is too complicated for 99% of users and what their needs are. I will say if you have a huge budget and you wanna work with an agency, uh, WordPress is definitely the way to go because of the customizability of it. But even at the previous job I was working at where we had 3 million visitors a year on a site and a big budget, we were still running into issues constantly even working with WordPress developers. So the next thing I wanna talk about is a nice tip for you. If you ever come across a site that you really like and you wanna know like, you know, what is this built on? How did they do this? Cause this site looks pretty neat. And this site's pretty cool. It's got these little like, I guess it's called Terra Living, these little tiny uh, eco habitats, I'm probably saying that wrong, that live inside of these glass jars. I'm kind of interested in it actually now. But what you can do is you can copy the site URL and then you can go to builtwith.com. And if you paste the URL in here, it's gonna tell you all of the plugins and everything that the site was built on. So as we go down, you're starting to see like Wix Pro Gallery, but what I'm looking for specifically is the content management system. So if this was built on Squarespace, it would say Squarespace. This one's built on Wix, so that's what it's built on here. But this just gives you an idea of how they're building everything out and how they built that site. Just a cool, helpful tool that you might find interesting. So at this time of the video, I thought it would be cool to do a live case study. And what I was thinking of is we can kind of do it like that show Chopped, if you've ever seen that on the Food Network. They give like people 30 minutes to cook food with whatever's in the basket. Well, in this particular case, what I decided to do was I get 30 minutes, I'm gonna take a random website, and what we see here is dailyplanetcoffee.com. This is a coffee shop here in Buffalo, New York, where I'm from. And I decided I wanted to try to rebuild the homepage of the site and give myself 30 minutes from the point of registering for the service and getting through to see how far I could get in 30 minutes with both Squarespace and Wix. So what you're seeing on the screen right now is actually me recording myself, giving myself 30 minutes using both Wix and Squarespace to recreate this homepage of dailyplanetcoffee.com. So what I'd like to do at this point in the video is kind of show you some of the frustrations that I had with the tools when comparing each other. So right now I'm on Squarespace and what I wanted to do was I wanted this text to be maroon because if we're looking at the original, whether or not you like the design, I was just trying to see you know, how easy is it to use the tool. So I have yet to figure this out. I didn't figure it out in the 30 minutes that I gave myself to recreate the homepage. And as you go down, you can see that there's some weird things on here just because I haven't figured out how to do some of these things yet. Um, we're going down, we're a little bit further. Uh, you can see that there's no map listing. If we're looking at the original Daily Planet site, you can see that they have you know the map here and then the footer. I didn't get any time to even mess around with maps or footers on this particular uh, Squarespace site because I ran out of time. If you look at this on Wix, and this is the um, actual, I'll put it in the preview version, you can see that as we go down, I was able to get uh, all those features added in. Of course, both of these would look nicer if I gave myself more than 30 minutes. Uh, but one of the really frustrating things is it's not really like a drag and drop editor on Squarespace. And just to kind of nail that point home, I still haven't figured out how to change the color of this text. If you want to do that on Wix, here's how you would do it. You would go to your editor. I would simply highlight all of this and I would click here. And this probably looks more familiar for you if you're used to, you know, typical kind of just drag and drop editor type tools. So I'll make it maroon. So pretty easy to do. One of the really nice things too, is if you right click on any element within Wix, it's gonna give you all these features that are built right into the tool. So if I wanted to duplicate this, I could duplicate it. And if I wanna delete it, I could right click and delete. So I find it very easy to be able to do that. And if I wanted to just delete that, I could delete it. And then if you want to uh, undo that, I can undo it and put things up in that way. So on Squarespace, if you right click, you're not seeing any of those options. These are just the normal options that you'd see on any particular website page. Like for example, if we go back here and I right click, kind of the same uh, elements that you can see if we're on Google Trends is the same if you right click on here. So there's not that quick kind of like cheat sheet of options that Wix has if you're doing editing. Where Wix, if I wanna change this image, uh, you know, I can change so many different things very quickly uh, just by uh, right clicking. For example, I went to animation, I want this to bounce in, and then I'm gonna click X, I'm gonna preview, and now you can see that that image bounces in that fast. So very easy in my opinion to kinda uh, change and edit things using Wix. 
So going down a little bit further, uh, if we go back to the original coffee shop uh, page here, they have you know a picture of their coffee shop, some text, and a menu button. That's what I wanted to recreate. But what I find difficult with Squarespace is they really force you into a template and then you can't really edit that template anymore. So for instance, if I wanted to use this particular setup here, but then if I wanna grab things and move them, it's kind of difficult. So if I do it, it's just kind of slapping it in like that. And as you can see, it's kind of just a, a messy user experience. Like it's just giving you very limited functionality and how you can move things around. So with Wix, one of the nice things is you can really just move things around wherever you want. So you can see I'm gonna move this here and then I'm gonna move this up here. I'm gonna move this button right here. And if I wanna change the link on here, I could probably just right click to find the link options. And then you can see how, you know, what I would do is send it to a page. Which page do I want it to link to? How about menu? Done. So I really haven't been able to figure out that customizable aspect with this. It's very rigid in the way that it works. I mean, you gotta kind of go like five extra clicks for every one click that you have on Wix. So really when you're comparing these two services, the biggest difference to me is that with Squarespace, it really boxes you in. Like you pick a template, the things on that template are here and here, and you really can't easily adjust those things quite as easily as you can with Wix, where I can just really, I can drag things all the way down to another section if I want. Where now this is in this section down here, so you just can't do that. So you can see if I try to drag this, it's gonna be stuck. If I drop it right there, uh, it did actually make it down here, but what it did is it pushed it into a three column kind of setup. So I don't want that. I want it back up here. So I got it up there, but now we're getting text over here to say right here. So I did manage to just get lucky and get this over now, uh, but I still don't know how to get it to a white text. And just found it very difficult. Like it's not very intuitive is I guess the easiest way to say it. So this image, I can't figure out how I would drag this image over here and swap you know, the image on this side versus the text on this side. Again, if I go over here, uh, this would be very easy here. I could go like this and then I can take this and we'll move the text over here. And now the image is over here. Very easy to do, very easy to manipulate. Um, very difficult to do on Squarespace because it's just like it's getting dragged and dropped into these different templates that are within the template that you're working on. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was the pricing. Uh, if you're on Squarespace, it does have an option to go monthly versus annual. Uh, if you're paying monthly, uh, you'll see their cheapest package is $16 a month. If you pay it annual, it's 12. On Wix, uh, the cheapest price is right in the middle of that is $14. They are just offering annual plans here, but you do have a 14 day money back guarantee. So if for whatever reason uh, it's not working for you, uh, you can always get your money back going the Wix route. So it is nice that Squarespace allows you to start out on a monthly plan, which is a little less you know, commitment out the gates. Uh, I do like that. What I'll try to do is I'll reach out to these uh, different companies and see if I can secure any kind of discounts and promo codes for you. You'd find those in the description of this video. I also have an affiliate link, which if you use it, it'll be the same price, the discounted price to you, but I can make a small commission. And I appreciate you using my link because it encourages me to make more content like this for my YouTube channel to help more people. So the last thing that I wanna talk about though is a fallacy that people have. They think if they build a website, all of a sudden it's just gonna have traffic and sales coming in. I'm not sure if that's what you're trying to build your website for, uh, but when you're using Google, one of the things that's really overlooked by people is they build a website, but really that placement right here, this is called the Google Snack Pack. Uh, in the next video, I'm gonna teach you how you can show up in this, kind of like Daily Planet Coffee does in this particular case. Really simple steps you can take because a lot of people will never even make it down to the list on Google for websites and they're gonna use your Google My Business page. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that in the next video on the screen now. Again, there are links in the description below for Squarespace, Wix, and WordPress. And I look forward to catching you in the next video to show you how to generate traffic to your website using Google My Business and generating local traffic via Google.